everyone, it's Jen. Welcome to my channel and my craft table. Welcome if you're new. I'm so glad that you're here this evening. So I just have a little one craft video to share with you this evening. And uh, the purpose of this video will be to show you how the monogram maker works in design space. So I know that there's a lot of different ways people can make their own monograms, but I did want to show you that feature in Design Space. It has some really cool things to add pizzazz to your monograms, and you may be interested in checking that out. So what the project is going to entail is I, my daughter and I went shopping at Target. We started our back to school shopping, and she decided that I needed a water bottle backpack. I'm not sure I would really necessarily put it on my water bottle, but it is kind of a good idea to hold a few small things, uh, especially when I have to leave my classroom and go to another location for a meeting or something, and I don't need to take a big bag. So this is kind of a neat little thing. I can put it on the back of the water bottle if I want to. It's got a strap here, and um, it's Velcro. It just comes off like that and it adjusts to your water bottle and of course it's neoprene it's got nice little interior and an outside pocket here so I was going to put a monogram here on the front and then I have to laugh this is so cute she decided that I needed one of these little straw covers for my straw on my water bottle um I uh I normally use like the Hydro Flask water bottles, you know, stuff that more aligns with hiking and stuff. But here in this past spring, um, my husband got me a Stanley and my daughter just thinks they are the end all be all. So I do enjoy it. I like having that at school in particular and saving my others for hiking and outdoors. But Anyway, I just thought that was so cute. They have uh, quite a few of these. I think these are a dollar at Target. Um, this was three dollars. Yes, this was three dollars, and these were a dollar. And they had all kinds of designs: fruit, sun, um, wine bottles, little um, water bottles like this. Just all kinds of fun things. So um, she grabbed a handful and then decided that I needed this one. But anyway, as far as the project this evening, um, I'm going to be doing this on my Joy. So I have my Joy standard grip mat, and I have scissors, weeding tool, brayer. Um, I do have on my measuring tape, and this was actually made using the monogram feature. Uh, I did this a long time ago. It was one of my first projects because it was just simple and small and easy. So I'll be using that to measure, and then I have like a gold um, this is gold, but on screen it looks like this holographic shimmer. So um, I'm thinking this will look really good once it's put on here and it'll just catch the light, etc. Well, let's head over to Design Space now and let me show you the monogram maker features and then we will get everything cut out and pressed onto here. And I will be using my Easy Press Mini, so I'll be heating that up in just a little bit design space I have brought up just a blank canvas and I am going to first I am going to find a shape um, what I want to do is I want to make this the size of the area of the spot on the little bag that I'm going to iron onto and I wanted to show you a couple of things so normally when I do projects like this and I want to basically have the area that I'm going to work with, that way I stay within those boundaries, I just go to shapes and I grab a square and then I come up here and I change the dimensions. And so that uh, spot there at the top that I'll be putting the iron on into is three and a half by about one and a half. And so I'll change the dimensions, and then a lot of times I will change the color. So this is what I would work with. So this is one thing you can do. This will make sure that I stay within that size boundary, okay? Now, something that I just learned recently is that you can actually do something that's pretty cool. You can go to shapes, 
Okay, I'm going to grab a rectangle right here and I am going to resize it just like I did before. So three and a half by one and a half. And I'm going to go ahead and lock that. And then instead of coming over here and giving it a nice little color, um, I'm not cutting this out anyway, right? So I can go to the operation menu and I can go all the way down to the bottom and I can click on guide. And so now what I have over here, my layers panel, you can see where it says square guide. So if you've ever seen um, like one of the infusible ink mug projects where it has like the little hot pink mugs that kind of help you center everything, this is a guide. And now it is the exact size I need. Um, it's not going to cut. This isn't going to cut either, so normally what I would do is I would just hide that before I went to my make screen. But I wanted to show you about the guide. I just think that is such a neat feature. Okay, so now let's go down here. So at the very bottom on the left-hand side, it says monogram. And I'm going to go to monogram. And now this is where you're going to have a lot of options. When you first pull this up, this will have, let's see, so it'll look like this when you first pull it up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to enter your initials. So I'm going to type in my initials. And then normally with monograms, you know, your last name moves to the middle. So, you know, something like this. Um, and if you choose an one, like let's say I chose this one, I would just come up here and I would change out the, um, I would just change the order of the last two letters. The other thing you'll notice is that you can do four initials. So let's say that I wanted to say Jen instead of my initials, I wanted to have the word Jen, which would be great. Then you have something called operation type right here, and then you can do a cut, you can do a cut and draw. I tend to just do the cut files. That's fine with me. Then we have different options. Okay, so let me go back and put in my initials like I had before, since I don't need four of them. And then let me just walk you through some of these. Now I need, you have a classic menu and a thematic menu. And then in the classic menu, you have four options. So the first one is modern. And these are the typesets that you will see in the modern um, selection. Okay. And then let's say that you chose something like, mm, let's say you chose something like this. All right. Something kind of simple or this, you know. What happens up here is that as long as you see these, you can actually add elements to your monogram, which I think is really cool. And the colors, you know, the colors really don't matter. It kind of just depends on what you're, what kind of vinyl you're putting on your mat, but lots of options and you just can scroll through. Okay. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. There are some like this bottom one here. Now this looks like the block letters with a little shadow offset. And you'll notice you've got this right here. This means that you don't have these decorative elements to add around your monogram. Okay, so just be aware of that. So you have a modern menu that you can do for texting. Okay, and then you have an elegant one. And again, with the same thing, some of them will have the decorative elements shown up here. You can just scroll through and choose the ones you want. And then let's see, I know that there's probably like this one here. There is no decorative elements to add around that. Okay. In fact, this is the one that you saw on my little measuring tape from earlier. We have these here. That's kind of a little busy in my opinion, but you, I guess it would depend on the project that you're doing. Okay, so this is a nice serif with all the little ends on it. Um, this one's kind of nice too. This one's very similar to that one. Um, 
So you just kind of have options. Then you have a handwritten textiles, and you can just scroll through these. These are cursive, all right, and scripty, so it kind of depends on what you're looking for. Then you have vintage, and um, to me, vintage is kind of like groovy. Here's an Art Deco looking one. Um, here is some with some kind of embellishment in there. You also want to be mindful about how small you are. Like something like this, I would not do on a very small size. I would do that with a very large size project, not a small one. That would be really hard to lead. And so that is the classic menu. Then you can come over to the thematic menu. Now this is where it gets really fun. Okay, so you can see that you have some options up here to choose the different text styles that are available, okay? And then you'll see your themes. So we have the sunflower, we have a Christmas one, that's really neat. That would be great for making um, uh, some stickers. You could do like print and cut stickers. That would be super fun. And then here, I could see this being like an address label. The wreath is nice and classic. Okay, so this is the botanical menu. And you just scroll through and you just decide what kind of text style that you like. The decorative menu is really cool. I've done some mugs, some infusible ink mugs with these. And again, you can scroll through up here to find the typeset that you want and then you can go through your different um, elements. So like this is just so classic. I love that. That is really pretty. And then um, you've got like a sunburst here. Okay, so just lots of different options. Then you have an occasion. So here's one with a graduation cap, an, an engagement ring. I'm not sure, that looks like stars. So that'd be more patriotic. You have uh, little angel wings and a halo teacher. All right, cupcakes for birthday. We have a heart, leaf, pumpkin for fall. And then, so you can just see like all the different elements here. So those are just super fun. And again, you just scroll through and depending on the, the uh, element you choose, you may or may not get three letters or you might just get two letters then you have an interest so we have like hunting and then one with a crown this one i love this one I've, I've used this one a lot because i have a lot of medical family members then we have a butterfly you could just do your last initial okay someone who's a good a fisherman uh, boating love the flamingo that's so cute Anyone who is a crafter, that'd be fun, right? There are some scissors, gardener, musical, sea turtle. I love the sea turtle. My daughter loves the sea turtles. And again, you just choose your font, okay? And depending on which one you choose, you'll have either the three letter option or you may just have the one letter option. And then the last menu to choose from is sports. So you can see again, I can choose from the typeset there. And then we've got just different sports themed. Okay, this one is for cheer, that's pretty cute. And then, you know, you just basically choose what you want. So let's, I'm just gonna go with classic. And really then it just comes down to choosing the design that I'd like to put on my um, little bag. And so I think I'm actually gonna go with this first one. I just really, I like that. Um, it's kind of a simplistic default, okay? Um, probably the only other one that I might would choose, not, I don't know if I would choose that one. And let's see, I could go to elegant, um, and I could do this one. I'd have to change it around. Um, the, well, 
Yeah, I think I'm just going to go back here to the modern and I'm going to choose that one. That seems to be the one that I gravitate to the most. So once you choose your design, you're just going to go to this button down here that says Add to Canvas. And now you get your monogram. So I'm going to kind of change this to a like a gold. Well, I don't really know if that's kind of gold-ish. <laughs> and then I'm going to bring that over here on top of my guide. And this is going to help me just resize. And, you know, I probably have a little bit of wiggle room on the height. Definitely the width is not a, you know, not a matter. So I'm really looking more to make sure that the height is good. So my height is a little bit less than one and a half. And I'm just going to double check really fast. Um, I have, I definitely have about, mm, yeah, I definitely have one and a half as far as vertical space. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave this be just like that. Now, um, something that you could do, just food for thought, you could go into images, click on all images. We could go to decorative elements, okay? And then you could choose, you know, um, you could always choose some little decorative elements to go off to the side if you, if you wanted to. So that's, you know, always an option. Just be very mindful that if you choose, um, like here, let's go with flourishes. So if we did something like this, and I just bring that in, okay, and it's something, this is something new that I just noticed here today is that when you click on something, it brings up a more like this. Um, I don't know if this is coming up for everybody, but I think it's kind of neat. So then you could choose another one. And it just kind of brings up things that you may be interested in. So if I were to add that to the canvas, and again, this is completely optional, but this would be a great way to customize your monogram. If you didn't like some of the decorative elements in the monogram maker, but you could, you know, put one on this side, you could duplicate that and bring it over here, then you could flip it horizontal, just like that. All right, and I'm gonna make that a little bit wider here. So the, then I would grab both of those little decorative elements, and I would go to a line, I would do center horizontal, oh, I don't wanna do center horizontally. Let me undo that choose both of those. I wanted to center them vertically. There we go. And then I could do a line. They're already aligned. Now this here in the middle. Okay. So what I would probably do if you were to do something like this would be to attach both of those. Okay. And then I would select all of that and do a line center and then everything is now centered. So just another option in case you, you're, you're looking for something particular to go around your monogram, and if it's not in the monogram maker, you can always just go into images and bring that element in. I'm gonna go ahead and hide that because I don't, I just want the monogram itself. And then this is ready to go. Now, this doesn't have to be attached. It is actually already done the way it is supposed to be. Um, you can always use the contour feature if you needed to contour something out or change it up a little bit. So I'm still gonna leave it alone. And then let's go over to the make screen. Now you can do this project on any of the Cricut machines. I have selected the Joy for this evening. And then my, I do, I am actually gonna be using my 12 inch mat. So I'm just gonna leave that alone. And then you can see right here that my monogram is in this top corner. And I'm only gonna need a two by two piece of vinyl. 
Now what I do need to do is hit mirror because I'm using the iron on vinyl, definitely going to need mirror. And then I'm going to click continue. Once I'm connected to my joy, then I am just going to go to browse on materials. I have everyday and glitter iron on um, bookmarked, but I want to see if I have any other options. Um, let's see. I would say, I don't know if it's necessarily really a holographic. It's more like a shimmer. I guess I'll just go ahead and do holographic because it's not really a glitter either. Okay, so I'm going to choose that and see how that cut does. Um, when all else fails, you could just use the regular vinyl, uh, iron on vinyl. So it will give you a warning to make sure that your mirror is turned on and that your uh, material is face down. So the shiny side is going to need to be down. And I tend to do more pressure. It's just something that I do when I'm, especially when I'm doing iron on. And then what's going to happen is I'm fixing to take you overhead. We're going to get the mat prepared and then I will load the materials into my joy. It will measure it and then it'll prompt me to click the go button and then we will be able to press the monogram onto the little bag. Now before we take a look at anything else, I do want to take you over to the heat guide. This is something that I often will check on things when I, you know, especially when I've been really busy. Okay, so I'm using the Cricut Easy Press Mini this evening. And I am using, let's see, I said holographic iron on, and my base material is a neoprene. So we got those three selected. I'm going to click apply. So I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my Easy Press Mini with medium. So it'll be two little lines, and we're gonna uh, preheat the neoprene itself uh, for about five seconds, heat that up, we'll press for 20 seconds, constant movement, firm pressure, and then slowly remove the liner when cool to touch. So this is always a really good idea just to, you know, check the settings, especially when you're doing something that is maybe different than you're used to doing. So normally I'm doing wood, paper, or you know other things and so this is uh, or you know some other kind of fabric the neoprene i don't think i've done neoprene yet but let's go ahead and head over to the overhead camera and get our mat ready and take a look at how that all comes together we're just going to cut this off got that done and again that's going to be our little spacing Okay, so we decided, according to our measurements, that I really just need, actually let me move this press out of the way just for a moment. All right, so we just need a one and a half by three and a half space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to and then and I'm just using my glass mat here with my grid and I'm gonna do a two by four that will give me more than enough of the vinyl material that I need if I was using my maker I would probably just leave the whole thing um, there and just put the sheet on but since I'm using my joy, I am just gonna go ahead and cut that down. Wow, there is a very big reflect. Wow, I've got lots of reflection going on tonight. Apologies. Okay, so there we go. We're gonna just, now this is the shiny side and this is the dull side. So we're gonna put the shiny side down on our mat and I'm just gonna take my brayer I like to make sure that my iron-on is very well adhered to the mat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and load this in my machine. 
And then as soon as the uh, design space prompts me, I will click on the go. This is all weeded out. So I am just going to pull this off of my mat and I'm going to replace this on top of my mat. All right, there we go. All right, so now we're just going to weed this out. And I can already see that I actually have a lot of real estate. So I'm going to cut this apart. Now, sometimes when I'm, especially when I'm working with gl especially glitter, um, what I will do is I will just kind of fold back so I can kind of see where the cut lines are. And then I will just trim off what I want to, you know, keep in my little scrap bin. But that works really well with the glitter iron on simply because that is really hard for me to see, um, you know, the, the cut lines. But we're just going to pull this off. And it looks like this is wanting to stay all together. So glad we have our little weeding tool to help us out. This particular vinyl is, um, I guess you could say it's new to me um, as far as I've had it for a while and just hadn't tried it. I really like to try new vinyls every once in a while. Okay. There we go. This is really, this is nice, really thick. Okay. All right. And then I'm just going to grab these two little middles. This carrier sheet is very sticky as well because this is definitely Oh my goodness. Okay. Here we go. It's just being a little ornery. Okay. All right. So set that aside. Then I'm going to bring in my pressing mat and okay, I've got a little Teflon sheet there in case I need it. And I'm just going to take this. This is, um, this is clean, but I do use it when I'm doing stamping and cards, and so it's kind of stained, but I'm just going to put that in here, and this will allow me to put my hand in here and not um, have any burning. So I am going to put my Teflon sheet there, and I'm just going to heat this up for about five seconds. And again, we're doing medium heat. Okay. And then I do need to grab my lint roller. have a brand new lint roller. I want to get one where it's just a refillable. I have it in my cart in Amazon. Okay. These are just the disposable lint rollers. All right. So now I'm going to put this where I think I need it. Okay, and then I'm going to just double check that from side to side. 
you know, that I've got approximately the same, so about a one and a quarter. One, wow, that is literally exactly in between side to side. And then, okay, I think that looks good vertically. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I don't want to hurt the neoprene. So I'm just going to use that Teflon sheet. All right, here we go. Firm pressure, moving it around, constant movement, firm pressure. And we're going to go for about 20 seconds. And as always, monitor your project. Okay, so now I'm going to remove this. And I'm just going to press that down on my cold glass mat. That will be very helpful to pull all of that heat out. Okay, so I think that's good. And now we're just going to pull this up and see if we need to give it any more heat. Oh no, that is perfect. No more, no other heat needed. This is fantastic. This. I don't know the name of this. I'll link this little glimmer holographic gold. That is really nice. Check that out. I will link that down in design space. I'm definitely going to buy some more of that. I love that. That's great. Okay. Well, this was a definite success um, little project for this evening. And I I hope that I was informative and helpful in as far as the um, monogram maker is concerned and that maybe you'll give it a try if you're so inclined. If this video was at all helpful to you in any way, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help get this video out to others who might be interested and don't forget to share it with your crafty friends. If you are not already subscribed, I'd love to have you as a member of the community. So hit that subscribe, uh, notif uh, that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll know next time that content is posted. And until I see you in the next video, as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.